Your neat line exhibit can be significantly improved by following a few principles of user-centered design. This means designing your exhibit in a way that will make your user be able to interact with your content easily. The content in this video is also explained in a written tutorial that you can find here or in the description below these videos. If you'd like to follow the text in this video, make sure you've turned on closed captioning. Which colors, shapes, opacity levels, and stroke thicknesses you choose can greatly enhance or detract from your narrative. Briefly, consider the following principles when developing your design. Consistency. Use the same settings for all geometries unless you have a specific reason not to. If one record differs, especially in shape or color, you must have a specific reason for doing so. That record must represent something different from all other records in your narrative. So in this example, I might choose to uh, map out a different area in another color if I'm showing the difference between two uh, particular areas. I've already got Duke's East Campus highlighted in blue. Let's say that I want to also show Duke's West Campus, but it's important to me that uh, the West Campus be highlighted in a different color from East Campus to show the two different areas. I'll create a new record, and this time I'll simply call this West Campus. And I'll use a polygon to draw out West Campus. I will do this quickly in this case for this demo, but because I've been so specific with drawing out East Campus, I might want to take time in future to modify my shape to make it more closely fit uh, the original West Campus bounds. So I might simply create a rectangle in order to cover most of the original West Campus. Double click to close. And now in style, I would want to make sure that my fill colors are different from those that were used for East Campus, but I would want uh, every other feature such as opacity to remain the same. So over here, this polygon, uh, the fill opacity is 0 0.3, but when it's selected, it is 0 0.5. So I would go ahead and change my fill opacity to match that information. And the stroke is uh, always set to one, full opacity. Now let's choose some different colors. Maybe in this case uh, we will choose uh, a green color. So we'll select a light green color. And as with my stroke over here, I want to make sure that the colors do match. So again, I'm using different colors, but I want the stroke color to match the fill color as it does on the East Campus block. Then I'll give it a darker color for user feedback. Let's see. Remember that we can copy and paste our hexadecimal codes for color. And I can do this in order to help me get a nice darker shade of the same palette. And remember then I can also copy and paste. Then what's left? the thickness of my polygon. I can scroll down to stroke width and maybe I'll set it to 5 to match. And then I can save. Now even though these colors differ, they look the same in all other features, right? They do the same things. The next consideration is visibility. Help your viewers out. Make style choices that help your viewers see your mapped narrative and differentiate individual elements on the map. Visibility can be enhanced not only by color, dimensions, shape, and opacity choices, but also by zoom and focus settings. So remember, we can make use of our uh, default focus and zoom for each individual record. So perhaps I want to zoom in to help my viewers find 
uh, West Campus more easily. Remember, I can click Use Current Viewport as Default and Save. And then I'll add this to Waypoints. And now because I have set my default zoom, I should be able to toggle back and forth between East Campus and West Campus. And that will help my viewers uh, navigate the map, even though they can also zoom in and out themselves on their own. Now let's say I have a georectified map uh, underneath my geometries that I have here. I would want to be sure that my geometries remain visible on top of this multicolored map. I've done a good job already by having a thick stroke uh, width, right? But I might also want to help my viewers by uh, maybe changing the color to something different that doesn't uh, relate to the map underneath. Maybe in this case I will actually make uh, my fill colors gray or even black keeping the opacity the same However, to make uh, my selection really stand out on top of this map. And then I'd want to do the same for these other geometries that I have. Finally, it's important to consider issues of uncertainty. It's very easy for us as humans to accept something that we see as true and or definite. Visualizing uncertainty can be a challenge, but it's extremely important to meet that challenge in Neatline. If you are uncertain about a record's location, be sure that you show that. Raise the geometry's transparency levels, remove the stroke, and maybe even choose a specific color to show that uncertainty. Likewise, highlight the areas where you are certain by raising opacity and adding stroke thickness. These are just two ways you might handle uncertainty. For example, if I return to my West Campus polygon, I could remove that stroke width entirely, and that might help to uh, give less defined borders to this polygon that I've created. I could also choose a specific color in Neatline to always show uncertainty. Perhaps I choose gray. And then anything that I show in my Neatline exhibit that I'm uncertain about, I highlight only in gray but things that I'm more definite about, I provide borders and a more defined color, such as black.